All right, guys, we're going to do the third uh, chapter of the Robot Club. So let's just get going. Well, you passed every challenge. You kept my secret. You smoked my butt. You delivered my slices. And thanks to you, we'll have one crush groove. Welcome to the club. Congratulations. Let's celebrate. OK, Robot Club, let's talk. There have been weird things happening all over town. Have you seen the lunchroom lately? There are roaches everywhere. And that robot mower I built for the golf course? It's out of control. Something strange is happening in my garden, too. My carrots are like seven feet high. Those are serious roots. Something tells me these are not coincidences. I think we should do a little investigating. Oh, I promised my mom I'd walk the dog. OK, the rest of us will split up. You coordinate. We'll use our notebooks to communicate. OK, everybody? Let's go! All right. Could this have something to do with uh, Omnisciences uh, new invention? Let's just uh, take them one by one. There you are. Hey, what's up? The roach count in the lunchroom. The custodian wants to spray, but that'll close down school for three whole days. Three days? Without school? Spray those suckers. The robot club has a way to get rid of roaches without spray. But we need a robot to keep the traps filled with roach bait. Can, Can you, you build, build one? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Careful. Hmm, we don't want to wire the linoleum. Okay, so we uh, have to use the spider legs or something. And try and squish them, but your best bet is to use the bait dispenser and keep the traps full of food. When the trap is empty, its light will come on. Okay, keeps the keep the traps baited until there are no more roaches. All right, yeah, let's just uh, watch watch the simulation. Okay, so these are the traps, I suppose, and these are the roaches. Okay. So okay, so we have the spider legs or the hover pods. I like the spider legs. It, let's use those. Okay, so we have to look at these for um, to see if the lights are on. This is the bait dispenser. Let's see. <laughs> okay. A couple of colors. I don't know if we need any of those yet. Yeah, that seems uh, not really necessary. Oh, well, this is a cloaking device. Wow. Okay. Maybe that will come in handy later. I guess we just have all the sensors. And we even have an animal sensor. I guess the... Okay, well, uh, this seems pretty straightforward. Um, we just want to basically move to where the light is. And then when we touch the light, we dispense the bait. And I think that should be it, right? So we just always keep going. Always want to point towards the light, and then when we touch the light, we use this thing. Um, actually, let's say, you know, when we're not touching a light, because we, I, I don't know how long this thing is going to take if we want to, uh, you know, remain there for a little bit uh, as this process uh, works. Okay, let's just see what happens. Oh, that's very fast. Okay. Okay, yep. Huh, ah, that's cool. It even uh, went to the uh, closest one first when it turned on. Okay, very few roaches. Okay, so we're not actively trying to squish them because we're being very humane here. And we just want to get them into the trap and then we'll... We'll just come and... Uh, you know, pick them up and set them, set them loose outside. Good work! Did you see that Mondo roach covered in green slime? That had me heaving. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that Omni Science slime? Let's go to the next one. 
So check this out. My carrots are so big, they're blocking the solar panels on my roof. My whole family's freaked. I'm gonna check the air in the water and see if I can figure out what's happening. Can you build me a robot to take care of my garden in the meantime? Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, so we're doing chores now. Uh, let's see, you've got to harvest. Oh, I remember this one. I have, for some reason I have bad memories about this one. Is it hard or something? I don't remember. Uh, okay. Uh, harvest a bunch of ripe pods and dump them into the bin. You start out with only two seeds, but you can use the harvester to plant more. Speed things up, try filling your squirtle with fertilizer from the blue tank. Okay, so that's up there. And spraying that on the growing plants. I see. Grow and then harvest at least 20 pods, dumping them in the yellow bin. You don't have to dump them all at once, right? So we can just kind of grow some, fertilize some, when they're good, we'll pick them up. Okay, so the bin is there, the fertilizer is there. Uh, oh no, they're in the yellow bin, okay, I don't know where that is. Let's just look. Oh no, so it's a purple bin, so they just got that wrong in the description. Okay. Let's try this out. Okay, so we'll need a squirter. We'll also need a harvester. Uh, actually, let's have a look. Must be filled up. Okay. That's useful. Right. Ten pots. Okay, so we can see when it's full. Of course, the plant sensor might come in handy. I guess threats giving the terrain is uh, it's not a bad choice here. Um, we have the liquid sensor, right? So that's useful to actually uh, go and find that uh, that stuff. I guess we we'll also need the purple sensor to uh, to go back to the bin. And when do we know when they're when they're grown? Um, this won't really tell us very much, except, well, I mean, we'll need it to actually pick them up, I guess, to harvest. Um, oh, interesting, okay. Hmm, I see. So we can pick something up, but we can also plant something. Right. So, I guess we start with a bunch of seeds, but where are the seeds, actually? Um, we'll have to check that out. Okay, well, okay, let me have a look again. Um, so I guess we start with those seeds, because I don't see them here anywhere. Um, great, and we just kind of want to plant them randomly, I guess we can have a... Okay, so... Let's uh, let's have a routine for planting, and then a routine for fertilizing, and then a routine for harvesting. And hopefully one round of that is, is enough and we don't have to repeat that. But I guess we could pretty easily repeat. Well, I guess we don't have uh, more seeds at some point. So let's just uh, start with that. So we'll say that we're going to plant first. Um, so I guess we can just drive around and kind of har harvest every once in a while. Um, we'll just go and then, you know, we'll just hit things, but that's probably okay. Because like most of the surface is uh, uh, farm, farm space. Um, and then we can plant. Okay, so we want to plant until it's empty, but we don't want to sort of plant them all in the same spot. Um, so maybe we'll need a timer or something? Yeah, we can have a timer of a second and then reset it after that every time. Uh, sure. We'll have a timer at the bottom of the robot. It's a very weird robot, right? Like, it's <laughs> it always looks very strange. Okay. So we'll say when it's, uh, a second has passed, we'll plant, and then we'll reset it again. And then second has passed, still. We reset it. Okay, these should kind of happen after one another, and so we'll just randomly drive around, and then we'll say when this thing is empty, we 
we go to the next task. So then what is our next task? Uh, we're going to fertilize. Okay, I'll just say this. And uh, I guess first we have to get fertilizer and then we have to dispense it. And that's probably that's two uh, quite different tasks. Uh, get the fertilizer. And so we want to uh, keep pointing to this thing. Uh, to the liquid. We want to go. Um, or like we want to really go when uh, when we're not touching it and then once we are touching it um, we want to uh, fill this up and then once it's full we want to go to the next task okay next task that will be the light blue task okay so this seems reasonable to me so we're going to dispense the fertilizer next. And so we'll basically keep doing this until uh, it's empty. And s yeah, what are we gonna do? So, I mean, I guess we can kind of like go, go to a plant and then squirt some, but how, then we, how do we then go to the next plant? Oh, I guess what we can say is like, we don't want to be near, ah. This seems uh, a little bit tricky. So basically, yeah, because how do we then sort of navigate away from a plant again? I guess we could just say, uh, once we are at a plant, we squirt a little, and then we turn and we drive for a little bit, and only then do we start looking for another plant again, and then hopefully we get, we kind of sort of get a new plant in our vicinity, because there's not a real great way to keep track of like the coordinates of a plant or something like that so we might have to uh, do something slightly random like that so I guess we'll uh, just always keep driving like why not and then um, yeah we point to some plant and then when we actually touch a plant uh, we uh, we say let's um, let's do some uh, spraying, and then also when we touch a plant, after you know at this point hopefully we have sprayed, we can go to the next task, and we'll say uh, find next plant, and we'll uh, let's see. We can just turn a little bit. Doesn't really matter all that much, I guess. We'll turn and we'll, we'll drive. Um, or let's, okay, let's do it like this. So we'll turn. Um, okay, let's just try this. Uh, it never really works great when you do two things at the same time, I guess. Um, Okay, so let's just turn for a little bit, and then after a second, we, um... Ah, no. Uh, oh wait, does this thing, this thing resets every time you go to a new, uh, new task, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. So then, after a second, we just go to the next task. Okay, we're getting... Way too many tasks. Right, next plant. S second part, okay, so then we drive. And then... Yeah, we can't really say when we're not near a plant anymore, because hopefully we'll be kind of near plants all the time. Um, so we'll just drive, and then after another second, we'll just go back to uh, dispensing. And we want to do this for a bunch of times and then uh, start harvesting. So I guess for that we'll need a, um, there we go, a counter. We have a counter that points the other way, otherwise, uh, yeah, there we go. Gets a little full on this one. Okay, so now I think I remember this is just a quite, quite complex uh, system. So we go here, then we go back here. And so I guess every time 
that we touch a plant here, we want to increase our counter. But we want to do this before we switch tasks, otherwise it will never happen. And then here... Okay, I guess the very first thing that we can do, or sort of like before we do any of this stuff, is just check the counter. So we can say if the counter is more than some amount... Oh, this is interesting, it's kind of... Uh, you can either do a small amount or... Uh, oh wait, no, this is uh, not the counter. Uh -huh. uh, sorry. There we go. Okay. So maybe like... Maybe we do this... Oh no, wait, we don't need a counter for this. We can just do this until our fertilizer is, is out. You know, may maybe if we need to pick up fertilizer multiple times, then we might need a counter. But for now, let's just, just say if, our, uh, if this thing is empty, then we're going to harvest. Um... Yeah, we're doing some real, real ag tech, agriculture technology. It's like some actual, you know, people doing, making robots like this. So here we're doing the harvesting. So that's our red task. Okay, great. Uh, and yeah, okay, I guess we kind of want to move this above all these other ones. So let's just do it kind of like this. Okay, because I don't want us to kind of like switch into this task, but then we're already touching a plant and then we go to the next task and then we just kind of like keep cycling with an empty tank, that's pointless. So this is uh, probably better. Okay, so then the harvesting is more straightforward. We keep going as long as there are plants and we keep filling up uh, our harvester. And then when our harvester is full, we drive to... Um, um, to drop it and that was at, um, at the purple bin so let's start um, we always want to point here we always want to drive when we touch we want to harvest when we touch a plant we want to harvest Ooh. There we go. So, uh, pick yep and then when it's full I guess we can say we're going to dump the harvest So, okay. Man, yeah, this is getting quite, quite complicated. And we haven't even run anything right yet, right? Like, we might want to actually debug our individual subroutines at some point. Uh, actually, we don't want this. We want to say when this is empty. Uh, sorry, when it's full. Um, then we are going to dump our harvest. Okay. That seems quite reasonable. And then we keep doing, we, we keep cycling between the, these two, sort of indefinitely. And for now, yeah, we'll just hope that uh, with our initial seeds and our fertilizer, we'll just get those, I think it was 20 pounds, they said. So, okay, so dumping the harvest means that we go uh, to the, to the bin, we drive there, and then uh, when we touch the bin, we uh, we dump, and when this thing is empty, we switch back to our harvest task. All right, this is uh, this is quite a lot of tasks. Let's just see how it goes. Okay, so we're planting randomly. Good. We wait a second, and we. Oh wait, was that it? Oh no, we... Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay. So, uh... We never get to that one. Okay, so now we're harvesting. Oh, but we, it's never full. And it's probably not enough, right? Hmm. Or do we have to get those seeds and kind of replant them again? That would be interesting. I mean, we got kind of unlucky here with this one. But it's surprising to me that there's uh, so few seeds initially in our um, in our system. Uh, let's actually see what they say again. Um, okay, start... Oh, they do say it. I just read over it. Um, with only two seeds, but you can use... 
harvester to plant more. Wait, what? Twenty pods. Okay. Use the harvester to plant more. I don't really get it. Uh, so are pots the same thing as seeds? That seems kind of weird. Um, plant or dump? Okay, yeah. So I guess so. Okay, okay. So we have to make some modifications. So I guess we kind of have to count how many we have. Okay, let me just look at what do they say again. Um, we have to grow and then harvest 20 pots. Okay, so that means that we necessarily have to make two sort of full trips back here. Um, okay, I think we can do that. I mean, we might want to just um, kind of have some approximations. Okay, so we plant them. We get fertilizer. Um, is there anything that can tell us sort of if it's? Um, yeah, I guess we want to. Huh. I mean, I think the random approach was kind of all right. Wait, did it change color? It changed color, didn't it? Okay, let's actually see what happened because we might be able to use the color of the of the pots that we plant. Um, yeah. Okay, they're yellow. Oh, that's very helpful. Okay. That changes, changes everything. Because, yeah, we don't, we don't want to spray those. Okay, so let's use a yellow sensor for that. And then for the dispensing, we don't want to point at a plant, we want to point at yellow. And similarly here. Um... When we're touching yellow, we want to spray. And we don't really need to counter anymore. Um, wait, did we even... Why did we use the counter? Uh, okay, great. We just use empty. Right, okay, so I can just get rid of that. So I kind of left that there by accident. And so, yeah. Instead of saying... Hmm, okay, so when we're empty we actually want to get more fertilizer and we only want to exit this task when there's no yellow anymore, right? That's the a real condition here. So when this thing is empty, we just want to get some more fertilizer. Um, let's see. Okay, after we've touched this, we want to do this, okay? And then we set if there's no yellow anymore. So none. Then we go to the next task of... Uh, um, I think it was red, right? Harvesting. Okay. So that is good. Um, but we only start with two pots. Okay, let's at least make sure that we plant those, both of those pots. Yeah, like this, this change. We want to, uh, working incrementally, right? We want to uh, first uh, make sure that this change works and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll keep planting pots until we have enough of them. Okay, that's one. Yeah, it's quite deterministic actually. Okay, that's good. Okay, excellent. Hmm. Maybe we want to use red here. Okay, we're using a lot of energy also. What is happening here? We're sort of stuck in this red task. Okay, so I guess it's seeing this as a plant. But maybe we should just use the red sensor here. Because um, it's stuck in this one. So it's pointing and then it's picking. And then it immediately dropped it because it was right next to it. So we never really saw it go to this one. Because it immediately would go back. Um... Or, no, I guess we never hit this condition. It, it was never full. 
So we just try to pick this plant that is just not there. Okay. Um, so let's get rid of our counter for now. I think we'll need it later, right? But we can hopefully use a red sensor to see, you know, so those uh, happy little flowers or pods or whatever it was. Strawberries. Um, so let's use this. Okay. And then, okay, so this stays the same. And, okay, so I guess we'll just kind of like wander around. Okay, so really we only have to drive if, if there's sun. We don't want to waste our energy, right? We can just sort of stay stationary uh, if there's nothing. No, no, no red uh, stuff yet. Okay, so this should at least pick everything up. Okay. Uh, okay, great. So it's not that deterministic. Okay, great. We fertilize that. We get some more. We fertilize that. Okay, we wait. Fantastic. And then, yeah. Yep. Okay, and I guess it's not full. So that's a problem. Mm. So I guess it's not the best condition. So because now there's nothing... Yeah, this is uh, a little bit tricky. But there's not a lot happening here. So I guess... Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, we can actually do our, our loop now. Because we know that um, until we have a full harvester, we can kind of like replant them anyway. Is that a great idea? I guess what we can do is we can um, have sort of a timeout that says, okay, if we don't get a full thing for a little while, we're just going to replant them. In any case, yeah, let's just go to go and replant it. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, well, we know that... Okay, let's just have, have a little counter. Let's just let's just try this. Okay, so we'll uh, have a little counter here. It's pretty much full now. Oh no, there's one more slot if we need something. Okay. So, I guess we can say we're going to harvest. And then, every time that we touch one of these, um, we increase our counter. So it's basically how much we have in our... Does this say that we have some in it? It's not empty. Yeah, okay, that's actually useful. So, let's maybe just use that first. We don't really quite need a counter yet. Uh, maybe we will need it later. But we'll say if we, uh, if it's not empty, then let's just go back. I mean, it's not ideal because we, ideally we would wait until we have more. But I think it's, it's kind of alright. You know, we'll, we'll pick up those other parts in the later iteration. We'll see if we can, can get away with this and not... If it, it, I hope it doesn't use too much energy, right? But let's just try this as a, as a starting point. So we... Uh, yeah, we can just go plant again. And then at some point we'll get here again. And uh, yeah, and I mean, clearly we need some sort of counter to get out of this loop and actually dump the harvest. Um, I guess we... That, yeah, we'll... we'll we currently never really get here, right? Because uh, as soon as we have some pods, we'll, we'll replant it. So we'll need... Actually, let me just remove this one because it's not never going to happen, right? It's dead code and you don't want to confuse yourself with that. So at some point we'll need to go to this routine, but uh, let's just see, see this loop in action. Okay. We plant still. Great. We got some, uh, some fertilizer. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that was kind of funny. What was happening there? Okay, so now we wait. Okay, great. And now we go plant again. Okay, this is good. How many do we get? Oh, oh there's four, I guess. Um, yep, great. I mean, our energy really is running quite low. 
Yeah. Oh, we put two on top of each other. Okay, we'll keep doing this. Right. Okay, now we replant. Yeah, okay. Also, first of all, let's see if we can use a different, uh, different way to get around. But this loop seems to be working quite well. Um, do we have something more energy efficient to move around? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, we have the spider legs. That's great. So let's get rid of these. Uh, okay, let me just get rid of the counter first. And then I can add the spider legs. And then I can just repurpose things. Because otherwise I might lose some of what I've done here. Uh, okay. Well, we never get to this routine yet, but... Just want to replace all of this. So this is a, a classic refactor, right? We are replacing every instance of that thing with this thing. Um, it might behave a little bit differently in some situations, but uh, okay, here we don't. Oh wait, we do. Have to be careful when you're refactoring. Oops, that was uh, the wrong one. At least uh, we'll have sort of, you know, the equivalent of a compiler warning or a linter rule or whatever. Because if we now remove this, it should tell us if it was used. And it was not. Okay, great. So we did a good job, uh, hopefully there. Okay, that's just, you know, we did a, we did a refactor. So let's make sure, sure that this still works. We're going quite a bit slower, which is totally fine. Yep, we're filling this up. Yep, then we go spray. Then we... Oh, wait, why do we do that? Why don't we just go immediately to the next one? Okay. Oh, wait, I remember. We wanted to do that originally because we had sort of this... Uh, we wanted to move away from the plant, but we don't need to do that anymore. Okay, so we can actually go and fix that. Okay, so we get this. Sure, we'll finish this. I guess one thing that we can say here in this blue task or... Yeah, in one of these tasks is if there's any red. Um, we want to uh, kind of like switch to that routine again. Because we know at this point we have planted everything. So it's, it's safe to kind of do that. And then uh, I guess one thing that we can do is every time that we pick pick up these pods... It's usually four, sometimes it's five, but I guess we can just have a counter that counts to four um, and then subtracts when it plants or something like that. I actually, yeah, I don't know. You can't actually add the counter and tell you when it's at like 20. This is pretty good. Okay, so let's actually get rid of this stuff because this is not really necessary. Um, so yeah, when we dispense the fertilizer, yeah, we don't really want to switch to this find next plant thing because we now use this yellow sensor, um, which is very convenient. Uh, so let's just do that. So we'll automatically, it will automatically just work, right? So we can just get rid of these. Uh, hopefully if I delete it, it will, okay. It keeps all the other colors the same. That's good. Because, you know, we, uh, and remember what those look like. Okay, so this is... Uh... Oh, why is there no sound anymore? The music has gone. Okay. Um... What else did we say? Right, so if we're seeing any red during this routine, we kind of want to go to the harvest routine immediately. Um... Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Because we want to... Uh... Kind of get, get as many seeds in the ground as we can as, as early as possible. So let's add that. So if we see some red anywhere, then we are going to switch to the harvest routine. Um, how else were we going to go to the harvest routine? Oh, when there's no yellow anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. So... So in both cases, it will go here and it will harvest. Right. Okay, let's just make sure that that works. And then we can um, do the counting and make sure that we actually dump our pots at some point instead of, you know, just waiting forever. Uh, 
and running out of energy. Okay, those are our first two, that's great. Going to fertilize them. Great, great, yeah, very efficient. Now we wait in our red task because there's no yellow anymore. Okay. Oh, and we immediately go and plant, which is exactly what we uh, wanted it to do. That's good. And so we've planted four pots. Uh, even five? Okay, great. And now it's going to fertilize again. Oh, this is not good. Oh no, this is good. It's picking it up. And now it's planting them again. Okay. Hmm. We're spending a little bit too much time not fertilizing. So maybe we want to actually just remove that uh, this thing after all. I think. Yeah, let's just uh, finish fertilizing because then, you know, it looks like we uh, we just do that. We we probably pick up enough um, early on that we can just. Um, pick them all up and then dump, dump them in the bin. So I don't think that we want to do this this harvesting part after all. We want to complete the fertilization part first. Yeah. Okay, let's just run that one more time and then we can uh, uh, finish it up do the dumping into the bin. It's quite satisfying though. Like that, yeah, there we go. Now we wait for it to grow patiently. We get this one. Oh yeah, we immediately go plant. So I think, yeah, we don't really know that yet, I guess. So this is probably all right. Because this is actually enough, right? Like if we fertilize all of these, we'll have enough. Uh, yeah, we would now just have enough to go plant everything. Um, so that is, that is a good insight, I think. So, um, we can count every time that we've planted something. And once we've planted a bunch of things, um, we never have to go into this plant routine again, right? Like, or we can even say, if we get here, we can immediately skip out of it. Um, so that is, I think, a good way to go about it. So, um... Let's see, he, so we did this whenever the timer was bigger than this. Oops, sorry. Um, so when we do this, oh, I got rid of the counter. Let's add the counter back in. Okay, there it goes. So whenever our timer is at that time, we'll, uh, oops, that's the wrong one. Hey, not that one. Want to add one to the counter, and then we'll have to reorder this a little bit. So I'll put this here, and I'll just, you know, to kind of keep them grouped, I'll uh, put that at the end. So, okay, so now our counter represents how many plants have we planted. And so if we ever get into this routine again, with a, uh, uh, with a counter that is, say, what's a good amount, probably six or so. Yeah, so, you know, we do two and and actually, yeah, from the, f we plant the first two and then we plant the next four, so that should be six, and that should be plenty in total, right? Because if each one of them has four, so we should be able to get to like, um, yeah, definitely more than 20 that way because there will be sort of five in the ground. Ah, it might, it might be stretching it, actually. Well, sometimes they have five, sometimes they have four. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Let's just say, let, let's just be a little bit safe and say, like, once we're at eight, um, we clearly have enough. So if this is uh, the case, then um, we can say, let's uh, go get some fertilizer. Um, actually... I think we want to, in all these cases, go to dispense fertilizer because if we still have some fertilizer, 
and that's great, we should use it. So, in this case as well. Because it's kind of like a loopy, uh, recursive program now, right? So earlier it would make sense to always go to this one, but we want to just dispense, and then when it's empty, it will send it to the get fertilizer immediately. So that is good. Um, so... Yeah, I think that that will do. And then here we can even also say, like, okay, you know, if we're in this dispense fertilizer part, but we already are at, uh, we've already planted eight. Um, well, that's not entirely true. We still probably want to fertilize everything. Um, because otherwise it's not going to grow. So, okay, this is probably fine. So then we say, okay, we harvest. And then we said here, if it's not empty, we're going to immediately plant. But then the planter will send us back here. <laughs> In this case, so here we can say, well, if if we have already planted eight, in that case, um, well, okay. In that case, we don't want to do this thing. It's kind of what it means, right? We want to keep harvesting until it's full and then dump the harvest. So, okay, it's really a little bit different. We want sort of like two different routines here. Um, I think. Okay, I guess we can kind of actually squeeze it into this one a little bit. So we can say, okay, you know, if um, if this thing is full here, uh, then we're gonna go there. If it's not full, then... Um, oops, that's not what I meant. Uh, if this thing is not full... You can't really express that, can you? Uh, not empty doesn't... Like, could also mean that it's full. Okay, so the hacky thing that I was thinking of, I don't think we can do here. Um, okay, so what do we want to do? So, we are harvesting them. And then really what we want to say, well, if it's not empty and our counter is lower than 8, then we want to go plant. But if our counter is at 8, we want to actually wait until it's completely full. Hmm. So, but I don't want to be task switching all the time here, although that might be fine. Um, how do we do this nicely? I guess, yeah, we can just have like two different routines. So we'll have... Uh, We'll have just a different one for the 8 case. So it's like when uh, when we're at 8 and we get here in the harvest routine, we're going to say... Um, we're going to get a new task. I don't even know if this is the right color, but it, it will be something like uh, uh, final harvest. Oh, it's uh, made it green. Because that's now an unused color. Because we deleted those earlier. Okay, so we kind of want to do this earlier, so we want to, I guess, you know, let's just be clear about it and just put this at the very top. So we'll just, you know, completely skip over this thing. In this order, it doesn't really matter, I think. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that seems, that seems alright. Okay, and then in our final harvest, we'll basically duplicate some of this stuff, right? So we'll say... No, we'll point to the red. Um, if there is some red, well, that should really be be the case at this point, right? If we have planted so much, but you know, it, it, we might have to wait for it to grow and not want to waste energy here. So, and then when we touch any red, we uh, we harvest, we pick it up, and then when we're full, then we're going to dump the harvest. And so we'll only really get into the dump harvest uh, state from here so we can then just say when it's empty we go just to this final harvest thing again right so we'll just uh, cycle between these two and so you know we have to be pretty sure about our number eight that that is correct but uh, that seems like a good first guess uh, we might run, run out of energy before then 
uh, so we might lower the number a little bit but um, yeah let's uh, let's see you know, we might we might have some bugs but uh, conceptually it seems right to me okay so it's getting uh, some fertilizer okay and now we wait we'll sit right on top of this one but this one will uh, actually be ready first okay and it immediately goes and plants okay which is good because we have now planted one two three four it picks up this one um, wait why is it green that is our final thing that's uh, way too too early so did we just count too much for some reason um, why would we have counted too much It shouldn't have done this thing multiple times there. Right, it should plant it, increase the counter, reset the timer immediately, right? So we shouldn't be getting here again. So that is a little bit weird to me. Um, hmm. Maybe this time is not enough or something? I mean, eight is already a really high number, right? Like we can, uh, like, so so we can't just kind of hack it and just pick a larger number and hope hope we will be fine um, which is also not very satisfying because like it should really it's pretty clear what it should be doing right so do we ever increase our counter somewhere we don't right this is the only place Let's just make sure of that though um, yeah when the counter is eight and this is the same counter we didn't so accidentally add multiple counters um, so we should just go we should yeah hmm we'll go to yeah we're going to the final harvest here yeah I mean it's also a little bit of a, of an issue I guess that uh, that we don't go to dump the harvest. Uh, yeah, let's actually say for this dumping the, this is like kind of a bug in general, right? Like even if, if we do get to eight properly, we want to say, if we don't see any red, let's just dump what we have now, because otherwise we'll just keep stuck. And we might want to put that behind a counter. Um, that seems like a good idea to me. Uh, if there's no nothing, then uh, you know, let's just dump the harvest first, and then I guess here we could say if if we see red now and it's not, yeah, but you can't really say and in this uh, system, right? But I could imagine here saying something like, okay, if we're going towards the bin, but we're not full yet. Um, so you could have two tasks for that, right? Like a uh, dump, dump full harvest or dump sort of semi full harvest. And the semi full harvest can be uh, can be interrupted if we see see some red uh, appearing along the way. So we can, you know, say oh, let's let's pick that up first, and then we'll go to the bin. So we might that might be a little bit more energy efficient. Probably also depends on where we are. I don't know. This is all, uh, but we have to fix our more pressing issue of the counter not working properly hmm okay well let's just run it one more time <laughs> and see if it really behaves like we uh, we think it does so okay so what I'm thinking is that it, it counts it twice because it gets it got to eight after planting four four items so if that is the case like where does that come from right like it should be if it's really sort of like stepping through these one by one, it should increase it once when it plants and then it should immediately reset after that. It's still surprising to me, but maybe we are reasoning incorrectly here. Yeah, and if we switch to another task and then immediately come back come back or something like that, that should also not influence this because we would have to wait another second because the timer resets at every task switch. Okay, let's just uh, run it and make sense of it. Okay, so this is one. Two. It's too bad that you can't see the state of the counter. Really, the counter should be two now. 
Okay, so this part works properly. Now we're waiting. And then we harvest one and immediately go and plant again. Okay, so we're in the planting. One. Two. Okay, so we should be at four now in total, right? Five. Okay, this is good. It actually went to five. It didn't... Um, it didn't immediately exit our routine. Okay. But it is sort of in the final... Yeah, it went to the final thing again. Okay. Well, I guess we got lucky, but we have to. Thanks! I should have some answers soon. Okay, I still think that the counter isn't working properly, so we might have to, uh, you know, take that into account in, uh, in future, future uh, missions. But uh, you know, let's just uh, let's just roll with that for now. Listen, my mower's gone psycho. We found tails and beaks in the compost pile. Stroller wheels. Oh man. You have to build a robot that can short circuit it. Use the zapper in the parts bin. Hurry! <laughs> we always have to destroy Carl's robots, whether it's intentional or not. That's uh, that's kind of funny. Um, we hit, have to hit the lawnmower three times with the zapper. Okay, so we're getting a new new gadget. Let's uh, run this and see what's going on here. Oh man, this thing is crazy. Why did he put such a fast, uh, fast motor on it? <laughs> Why do you need a lawnmower that that goes so fast? Okay, so I guess this, is this the zapper? Oh no, this is the zapper, and this is a tech immobilizer. Let's check out the zapper. Electrifies your robot's surface, giving a powerful electric shock to anything your bot is touching. Consumes a lot of energy. In the right program, it can be lethal. Great. I don't think we even need to move around, right? Like they were hitting us all the time. Um, oh, the go action for this remarkable piece of machinery creates a short-lived, high-powered field of energy, which will temporarily disable any robots in range, except for the one initiating, uh, initiating the blast. Okay, so what if we use this so that they don't hit us and damage us um, if they get near us and then just quickly scoop in and uh, use the zapper on them. And then um, I guess we have to move out of the way again um, because they'll they'll start uh, start going again. So, okay, that seems like a, a reasonable idea. So we'll have these two. We'll need to actually detect robots. Um, do we have anything else interesting, new? Sound sensor, no. Okay, so that seems like a good start. Um, okay, let's just uh, let's just check or try the the initial premise. So um, let's call this S start. Um, so we'll basically say whenever uh, tech is near, we will try to immobilize it, and then also. When tech is near, uh, I guess we can have a global task, uh, zap, where we say, um, whenever tech is touching us, we want to zap it. I think that seems good. And then, I guess when we're uh, getting near and we're doing this to them, we can, uh, well, let's always point at them. Like, that seems also fine. Uh, and then when it's near us, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, go towards it. And then we'll zap it from this thing. And we might need sort of another routine to then back away. Let's just see if, if this works. Okay. Ah! <laughs> okay, okay. So we then have to move away for sure. <laughs> But that was uh, that was quite satisfying, to be honest. Okay, so let's just uh, actually we can make this just not a global task and just say, um, uh, oh, let's keep this when we touch it. We go and then uh, and then we back up, and then after a little while we go back to to this task. So I guess when we're uh, when we're near, 
we'll say let's uh, let's switch to the zap task and then uh, yeah I mean we can still have also a global task you know for good measure that that does the same thing because this is always useful um, you can keep it here too that doesn't matter too much so it's like um, well no that is not what we want because what we want to say when we're near we uh, we go and we go but then when we touch it we want to zap right so when we touch it we want to go to the zapper and then back up so really what this means now is like uh, zap and back up so it's like zap and move away and then uh, we kind of want a timer, right? Or we can say when we're sort of in medium range again, we can go to the other routine. And then this one will make sure that if it kind of bumps into us, that we'll, uh, we'll try to zap it again. So then we can say if we're in medium range, we'll go back to our other thing. And this won't work great if we're kind of like backing up against a corner, but hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> So let's just, uh, let's just see if this is good enough for passing this challenge. Okay, we wait patiently. Okay, we might want to drive a little bit, but this is not taking much energy. Uh, okay, I think we did something wrong. No, when we're near we go. Okay, so we just never get near. Okay, so let's just go randomly, why not? Uh, I was just worried it would take too much energy. Uh, I guess we can just do it like this. Okay. Oh. Okay, that it. It ruined us. <laughs> Interesting. So this this thing seems to. Uh, It's, it's a good zap, but it takes a little while for it to um, to recharge, it seems like. Does it say anything? It didn't say anything about that in the notebook, right? Um, three times with the zapper, right. So it doesn't really say, but I think that, you know, we were getting really close and then sort of touching it and backing up again. Um, oh, we never maybe really touched it. No, I think we did, right? Because if if we touch it, this thing zaps. Hmm. So maybe we should um, have a timer to make sure that we back up for long enough instead of having this um, medium distance. We just really want to get out of its way. Um, let's maybe say far then, right? Like that should be enough for us to really get out of the way. I mean, we might really get us into a corner this way and it will just kind of like move against the corner and not uh, go any further, but... Okay, let's just uh, try this as a next iteration. Okay. Interesting. Far is not that far. Okay, we zapped it another time. Oh no, now we zap it another time. Okay. We keep disabling it, that's good. Okay, I think we zapped it three times. Good. Well, our energy is also gone. <laughs> Talk about robot combat! You drew green blood! I wonder what that was. Robots don't have green blood. Hmm. Hmm. Omni science at it again. Alright, let's uh, walk the dog. She mentioned that in the beginning. Sparky, no! No, bad dog! Bad dog! Need a dog? Robin just called. She said she has some evidence that links the roaches to Omni Science. Sparky, sit! If you can build a robot to walk Sparky, I can get to work. All you have to do is make sure Sparky doesn't bark. And you know, take care of any mess that might happen. <laughs> Okay, they didn't have the budget to actually get a, a dog in the, <laughs> in the video. 
All right, let's check this out. Time to take out uh, Andrea's dog Sparky. Sparky's a handful. You'll see what I mean, especially after you have to clean up after him, okay? Ah, here's a recording of Andrea's voice to keep him in line, that's funny. And a scoop should come in handy. We want the robot to handle the dirty work. Well, we definitely do, that is why we have robots. So keep Sparky from barking too long at squirrels. Okay. And uh, keep the park from getting too sparky. <laughs> Let him bark too long at a squirrel or leave behind souvenirs and we'll lose. Okay, so it's uh, kind of a two, two prong task. Let's just run and see, uh, see what this looks like. Okay. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of noise. Okay, there's another squirrel. You gonna go for it? I mean, Sparky seems uh, seems to be stuck. I guess uh, Spar Sparky is uh, is an automaton of sorts himself. Okay, Sparky is stuck. Okay, whatever. I think it's clear what we have to do. So we have to scoop, but we didn't actually see. The scooping part. Oh yeah, and this is the tape recorder with um, with a voice. Um, we have a sound sensor. Oh, we have a poop sensor. That's just wonderful. Great. So, ha! <laughs> Can even use it in the duel. Um. I guess it's useful to have the animal sensor to stay close to Sparky, although we don't want to um, waste too much energy. Okay. Can we get away with just one task for this one? That would be interesting because, okay, we want to say when we're uh, far away from Sparky, we want to uh, kind of go towards him. And. Uh, I guess not, we'll have a scoop task, uh, because, yeah, okay, we'll have some, some other things. Uh, in this case, yeah, so our default is uh, we'll just always point at Sparky and kind of like get closer if necessary. And we'll say if we hear some, uh, you know, if there's some some sounds, we'll play, uh, play our voice to get him to uh, calm down a little bit. And then... We have a scoop task, and in the scoop task, um, we want to pick up if we're touching. Oh no! <laughs> if we're touching the poop, uh, we'll always go. And if there's no poop anymore, we'll go back to our original task. And here we also have to say that if there's some. Some poop somewhere will switch to the scooping task. And um, I guess actually this one can go to a global task, like we can always do this. Um, calm Sparky. Uh, so can I cut this from here? Like it might not work if we're far away, but you know, we might we might as well try if we hear some some noise. We can even, even yeah, we can do that when, when we're scooping as well. So, uh, yeah, let's try that. Okay, we're close to Sparky. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I love it. Are we playing the right? Why are we not playing her voice? What is this? Sound sensor. Hmm. Nearest sound producing. I mean, maybe we're just too far away. Well, it says some, and it, it, sh it should be able to find sound that is far away. Do we have any other sensors that might be helpful here? No. Maybe the animal sensor? Oh, we don't have. Oh. I guess that doesn't help. I was thinking if, the, if, if a squirrel shows up, but Sparky is also an animal, so that wouldn't have helped. 
Oh wait, we have the animal sensor here. Right, yeah, so that doesn't help. Um, interesting, we might actually, you know, go follow squirrels uh, because of the sensor sometimes. But let's then, do, then just say, let's just try to get to a little bit near. Like if we're medium distance away, we also want to go. Um, so hopefully we get close enough that we... Oh, I didn't make this a global task. There we go. Okay, that explains. Well, we're also getting closer now, so it might be good anyway. Heal. Okay, I think it worked better when uh, we were not that close because we uh, we ran into Sparky. Okay, so let's try this. Sparky is killing us. Oh man, <laughs> we're so weak. Oh sh shoot, what did it do? Okay, <laughs> we're we're very weak compared to Sparky. Um. Okay, so Sparky was running into us, so I guess we can have one where it's like when we're near. Uh, we can back up a little bit. Hopefully that should uh, solve some of that. Okay, so we keep a safe distance. Okay. Okay, we avoid Sparky pretty well. Yep, again, that's excellent. Uh, okay, we don't really go to the poop. Um, which is because we don't point to it. There we go. Um, Okay, so I guess if we see poop, we want to maybe not go immediately towards it. So I guess we'll still only go if Sparky is not too close. So we'll say medium or far. And hopefully that is good enough to prevent us, you know, driving right into Sparky when he just pooped. Um, when he's still near. Yeah, so we'll we'll get a little bit close maybe. I mean, it's not ideal. We could have another task that says, you know, wait a few seconds and then go to this routine. But okay, let's uh, let's try this first and then we can we can always try that. <laughs> what a cute dog. that at the end sparky uh, dug up some uh, some nuclear looking waste or something that was weird um, all right and we got another mission here so let's check it out I was right these incidents are connected the lunchroom Ruby's garden the golf course and the canister where Andrea's dog dug up that gunk and right in the center Omni Science Headquarters. I'll bet that green slime is Project Greenlight. Somehow, it's affecting plants, machines, and probably people. 
We've got to warn OmniScience. And I want you to build a robot that can deliver the evidence to the office of George LaRue, the guy in charge. Maybe if he knows it's from the robot club, he'll take it seriously. Remember that piece you got from the scrap tank? It can make a robot invisible. Oh man, this is a terrible idea. Why don't we uh, go to the authorities? Instead of going to the, the evil... The evil corporation. But, you know, it's like... They still have faith in humanity. So let's see. We have to uh, get our findings to that that douche douchebag that we saw at the beginning. <laughs> uh, or in the previous chapter, I think. You have to sneak through a busy mill room to do it, dodging any mill bots. Uh, robot or human? <laughs> Hard a human. Bots, okay. The robot, uh, robots will only sound the alarm if you touch them. But if any humans see you, it's all over. We've given you a very cool experimental cloaking device, but right now it still soaks up a lot of juice. Right. So if there's a human, we want to cloak. If there's a bot, we don't. <gasps> okay, let's just uh, run this. Oh man. <laughs> that is a lot of humans and they run very qu very quickly um, so I guess we just want to avoid being in a certain range of the humans what did I say again sneak through a bit busy mail room yeah okay uh, and there's the door let's just run that again okay so immediately Right, uh, everyone is done. Okay, so there's an orange door. We definitely need our cloaking device. We have a people sensor, that's uh, very useful as well. We probably don't want to go too fast. We'll just bump into stuff. We probably want a tech sensor. And, uh, yeah, where's our... Oh, here, orange. Great. So... Yeah, I guess the humans and the cloaking really go together. So we want to globally probably say... Oh, well, let's just start with our start task. Where... I guess ideally we just point to the door and go. And then... We want to have something to avoid... The robots. So I guess we can say here... If the robots are like medium far away or far away. Then we go, otherwise we can just stop. And if they're near, we can maybe back up a little bit. Um, yeah, sure, let's try that at first. Might not be, I you know, it's, it's, none of this is ideal. <laughs> but uh, we'll try this. So this is actually a global task. I actually marked it this time. And we'll say if a human is near. Let's see if that is enough. Um, that should be enough. What, do we have any other actions? Just go, yeah. So, um, I guess we can also steer clear of humans. Yeah, so we're not really steering, right? We're kind of like pointing uh, towards the door and along that one dimensional trajectory we can kind of like move back and forth oh and here we said near we wanted to back up yeah so we can move back and forth along that uh, line but that might not be enough we might want to actually have a trajectory through space where we uh, kind of avoid people or robots but let's see let's see how well this does Oh, okay, so medium distance. Just looking at near is clearly not enough. So let's, uh, let's try this. Okay, so we at least should not be detected by humans. Just by them looking at us, right? Um, it all happens so quickly though, it's hard to see exactly what's going on. But let's try that. Oh no! Oh dear. Error has occurred. 
Uh, I guess I'm going to click ignore. Okay. I might still have some, uh, you know, dangling null pointers. Oh no! Oh man, this is, uh, <laughs> let's just uh, restart my VM again. I think that helped uh, last time. I think that is what we had so far, so let's just run that again. Okay, that did not work. But what did, what went wrong? I think we, um, we touched a lot of things. So it might be a safer strategy to, I don't know, kind of like hug the wall and then go the other way. Huh. Like it seems uh, quite risky to just barge through the middle of this room. <laughs> okay, let's just, um, let's just look at this again. Yeah, okay, we touched the robots. Um... Yeah, this is not too easy, is it? What can we do here? So we can... I mean, we're already going quite slowly. We might want to go even slower, I think. We can use this one. Yeah, sure, let's just do that. Uh, get rid of all of those. We definitely don't want to point at... ...that anymore. Um, what is our starting orientation? Okay, so we could... Man, this is, this is a hard one. They just run into you so quickly. So, okay. This might be harder than I thought. Let's, uh, let's have this thing turn 90 degrees right. It's interesting that it says 90 degrees. Is that like an atomic action? Um... Good. Let's uh, let's just try this, and then I don't know. I we'll have another task. Okay, let's actually just see if that works. Oh no! Come on. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That is very useful. So um, I guess we can have our global cloaking task again. Are we only cloak? Actually, let's just um, always cloak. We can, if we use too much energy, we, we can deal with that later. So let's just go for a little bit. And at some point, is there something where we can say we hit the wall, like we touch anything? Um, yes, obstacle sensor. Right, so we kind of just want to go until we touch that wall and then we want to go to the to the door so we'll yeah let's uh, let's see if that works so yeah we'll say when we touch an obstacle we'll go to this uh, class number three and from here we can say let's uh, uh, no that's not what I want let's point here and keep going Okay, so this is definitely not perfect, but let's see how far this takes us. Okay. Okay, so there the human touched us. Um, okay, so while doing all of this, we want to steer clear of both humans and robots. And the problem is, I guess, that we're not... There's not just one robot, there's not just one human. And if we just stand still they will pretty much just run into us. So that won't really help that much either. Hmm, what's the, what's the strategy here? What's the strategy here? If someone is kind of coming towards us, you either want to go faster or slower. Okay, let's run it one more time just to see. Okay, so we kind of go. Uh, 
Okay, we're in green, but we didn't even point to wipe the door. That's weird. We were in the third task, but we didn't. What color is that door? Oh my god, okay. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to see what the color of the door is. Yeah, it is. Uh, orange. But I guess there might be other things that are orange in the room. Okay, let's see what the notebook said. Um, sneak through a busy touch. Yeah. To the office door. And that's really the only door, right? Yeah, there's no other door. Okay, I feel like, you know, if you already get spotted in like the very first second, that a good part of this exercise is going to be luck. <laughs> um, that seems inevitable. Let's just always cloak again. And yeah, we'll turn 90 degrees right. We'll immediately go to task 2. We'll just keep going. When we hit an obstacle, where's that thing? sensor we hit an obstacle we will turn again and so here you know if we can't actually point at the orange properly maybe we have to get closer first I'm just going to gonna try brute force again so we'll turn 90 degrees left now um, and then we'll go to the next task immediately and then in the next task we'll just go and then hopefully we hit the door and before it crashes again let me save this uh, so this is um, mail room I guess it's a name okay Let's run this. Uh, okay. I guess we never sat here to actually go to the next task. Ooh. Okay, okay. Oh no. Uh, I mean, let's just open this one. And we just had to fix this. So we point at number two here. And from there, yeah, okay, we always have a ne next task except there. All right, let's try to uh, make our way through this. Right, we'll just run right into that person. And how are you going to navigate this, right? It's like, you can't just point at the closest human. I guess if we point at a human, we can back away from it. And the same for tech. Okay, that is actually not a bad idea. Okay, let's try this one more time. Oh, I guess we want to turn left here, not right. We did! Okay. Okay, so this clearly doesn't work. Um, let's try something different entirely. can just keep those other ones around and reuse them later. Um, so... We want to point at the door, which originally I think it did work, right, when we did this. Yeah, let's just try that again. Yeah, okay, we do go to the door properly. But then we want to say if there's like... Uh, I mean, it's going to be so busy in the middle there. But I guess, okay. We want to say if there's a robot nearby, point to it and back, back away from it. If there's a human nearby point to it and back away from it um, yeah I mean it's possible that you point away from a robot and then bump into a human <laughs> you know <laughs> what are we gonna do here so we can say if um, if we have tech tech that is near we'll go to number two and we'll call this uh, back up from tech and so this is uh, we want to back up we want to 
point at the deck while we do so. I guess we can also point away and just drive forward. Um, but I think it will be a little bit clearer for us to see what's happening when we do it this way. And then when we say when um, deck is like medium or far, we switch back to our main task. Okay. And then we have another one that is like back up from human. Okay, sure. And again we want to back up. And again we want to... Uh, oh, and we want to point at the human. Um, sure, let's do that first. We want to point at the human. Did we do that in the other one? Yeah, okay. And then if we're medium we can switch back. And if we're far we can definitely switch back as well. Okay. And then we're always cloaking still. Seems like a good move. <laughs> like we don't, don't nearly run out of energy yet, so we can optimize that later. Uh, and here we have to say if we're close to humans, we uh, we want to back up from them. Okay, so this is another strategy. Let's save this again in case it crashes. Yep. Okay, now we're just not driving at all. Also, it seems... <laughs> What's going on? The button has disappeared and these... Okay. It seems to have kind of... Okay. It's kind of crashed. Uh... Okay. At least we saved it. Let's just check. Yeah, okay, that looks good. Oh, this is so much better. Oh. We survived like a hundred times longer. <laughs> um, okay, so we might just not just want to back up, we might also want to turn a little bit or something. But that was quite promising. Like that human was just standing in the way. <laughs> Let's just try it again. Let's just try it a couple of times and uh, hope that we get through. Because I'm really done with all these crashes. Okay. Move, move! Okay, okay. Um, okay, so we might have to actually do a little bit of a diversion maneuver. So... What can we do here? I guess we could say... Hmm. So we want to back up a little bit, but then maybe turn a little bit and drive a little bit before we kind of uh, go and point again. So what's a, what's a nice way to do that? I guess we can just make another task that has the same, the same things, but it doesn't have this point in it. And instead, okay, yeah, okay, so let's try this. Um, move aside. So I guess what we can do is, before we actually switch to this task, we turn by some amount. Yeah, that's probably easiest. We say if we're medium far, um, we want to turn, let's say turn left, and then, um, you know, if we're, f if we're really far away, then it's probably fine to just go back to this task immediately, but uh, in most cases we'll be medium. I mean, it might be, I might be overcomplicating that, okay, let's just, let's just try this, and then here we'll do something similar where we say, okay, if we're medium amount away, we'll first turn 90 degrees left, we did left there too, right? Yeah, and then we'll have sort of like the same pattern uh, where in the medium case we go to the move aside and so we go for a little bit um, and we need a timer I think a second is probably enough um, so let's add a timer and say okay 
after one second we can go to our main task again but we also want these right like if we actually get near someone again we do want to um, get out of the way again so uh, we'll put this in to go back to the so this is backup from human and this is the tech sensor if we're near we back up from tech okay let's definitely save this sure um, okay let's try this out wait do we go here yeah we go here okay that's good okay I mean that's not the worst it's kind of Why was it rotating for so long? I guess the task switching takes a little bit of time or something, huh? It's definitely it's clear that the yeah that the programming language isn't uh, isn't without some of its bugs or uh, places where it doesn't really match expectations. Let's try that again. Oh. Okay. Okay, so let's just try this again. Yeah, that is not really what we want. So maybe we can fix this by just changing this. You know, it really should only execute once. We can just do a slight turn and then hopefully it won't be so crazy. And then when we go to the move aside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does seem tricky. Yeah, well that definitely doesn't seem to work. <laughs> um, instead of just doing a turn left, can we just do a point, to, point away or something? Let's just see what happens in that case. Because we hopefully just... yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah, when we get stuck in the corners, it's never fun times. Uh... Okay. Without the crashes, I would definitely keep going for a little bit, but I'm going to look at the tips at this point. Uh, just because you're invisible doesn't mean you're invincible. Well, th we discovered that. Um, okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was not very helpful. Uh, and this is just, yeah, this is just the regular help. Okay, so... How do we avoid... You know, like, there's always a good possibility that we just find ourselves somewhere and someone just runs into us and we can't really avoid that. But, um, yeah. So at some point, yeah, we also have to deal with the cloaking, but this is not a uh, priority yet. Okay, so how do we, how do we kind of, like, maneuver? So our original problem here... Right, like if I just switch this back to, to yellow, um, our original problem, if I would get like rid of this, I guess, well, it doesn't really matter because we should immediately point again. So, okay, let's just save this again. Um, was that we just got stuck sort of in the middle there. But otherwise, it seemed to function not that poorly. And then and we touch them, right? So. Um, yeah, what do we do here? What do we do here? So not, I guess another thing that we can do is kind of have the same algorithm, but only point 
towards the door after a certain amount of time. So we can say for example after being in this for a second then we'll point. Well it's kind of similar to what we were doing there. Mm. We can also split it up into like a different task or something. Um, Yeah, because now we'll, you know, we'll just go sort of like back and forth. Because we're not really turning while we're doing this turn, I guess. So it's, it should be kind of equivalent to what we were doing earlier. Except, that, yeah, I mean, that is a little bit better, I think. That in the very beginning we just go up for a little bit. I mean, we might want to do the thing that I did earlier where we go right for a little bit, but... Yeah, because there are like desks there. Okay, I'll restart again. Okay, so where were we? We wanted to say, well, we want to point only after a little while. So I added a timer here that says after a second. And we just wanted to try that a couple of times, I guess. Um, yeah, let's run one more time. Yeah, it's not that great. It works better when we were not doing this. <laughs> um, I think conceptually there's something to it. Mm, let's just run this one more time. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's too bad that you can't say something like, you know, keep uh, keep the human at, on the right hand side or something. <laughs> that would make this a lot easier. Um, it's still surprising that this doesn't work, right? Because we're like turning. I guess we can kind of like do this in a different way. Where it's like, uh, we make this turn left. And we say, you know, we turn left. And then immediately after that we go to the to the turn aside one, uh, to the move aside one. And here we remove this and we go to the turn left. Um, and here similarly. And then after a second of this we Go back to our regular scheduling. Um, let's not put in these other... Yeah, I guess we have these still. Uh, oh no, wait. We, we turn left and we go to this move aside thing immediately. Okay. So... Maybe this works better than having sort of this 90 degree left thing baked in here. Um, let's try this. Do this first. Might be too aggressive again. Let's just uh, like this. Oh yeah, it's just a small turn, but it's yeah, it's going pretty, pretty crazy. Um, okay, let's run that one more time. Okay, of course. Okay, so maybe actually let's let's just. Try a 90 degree turn here instead. See how that works. And I think we don't really need a full robot because the, uh, you know, we get stuck with that one human. So let's just not do this with a with a with a robot. Let's just here say, you know, we just go back to what we were doing before. We're just backing up a little bit. Give them some space. Okay, and then here. Yeah, so it, it just goes way too quickly there. <laughs> like it. Okay, so what if I do uh, a smaller turn left again? But really, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of confusing, right? Like when. What? Well, yeah, it's hard to get it to do something like this. I mean, that's probably 
some of the best that we've seen so far. Let's save this again. Let's do this a couple more times. Okay. Okay. So we're back here. Let's try this a few more times. Ooh. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> you did it. And without being caught or tracked. They've got the evidence. Now we can get ready for party time. Okay, great. Um, hopefully they will uh, use this evidence instead of covering it up. But um, yeah, I think that last exercise was... Uh, I, didn't, it, I didn't like it as much and not just uh, all the crashes and the reboots that I had to do. But... Um, yeah, it, it feels it feels like uh, you kind of have to get there by luck a little bit, and you have to run it a couple of times. Um, I uh, actually think I like the harvesting one the best. Like there's like a good state machine, and you kind of have to, add to reason about a couple of different things, but it all fits quite well in the programming model that they had. Uh, the roaches one was not that interesting, I guess. The mower one was like a little bit weird, it was like a little unclear like how long does it take for that zapper to reload. And the walk the dog I thought was uh, was pretty good, you know, you kind of have to keep your distance, not have, not have the dog come too close and destroy you, but I don't know, it is, that's, that's, uh, that's maybe this, the second best one out of these, um, in my opinion. But yeah, this harvesting one, maybe maybe I remembered it because I had like a good, good memory about it, but... Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's stop there. I have a lot of uh, cutting to do in this video to take out all the reloads and uh, restarting of my computer, of my VM. Uh, but see you uh, see you next time. I'm still excited, even with all the crashes, to uh, to play more and uh, go to the next chapter. So see you then.